a boy on a motorcycle and a tow truck with an attitude. Combine to create an unforgettable scene in the science fiction thriller Terminator 2 Judgment Day. To carry out director James Cameron's vision for the film, second unit director and stunt coordinator Gary Davis pieced together the action over the course of three weeks. Yeah, that's good, Dick. One of the main challenges for Davis was to plan the chase sequence so well that viewers would be unaware of the transitions between the actors and their stunt doubles. We had a couple of different doubles for, um, for our lead actor in, on the bike, Eddie. The stunt doubles for actor Eddie Furlong were Bobby Porter and Doc Charbonneau. The chase required them to mimic Eddie's moves, but Charbonneau was four inches taller. Davis used different size vehicles to compensate for their contrast in height. I put Eddie on an 80cc bike and I put Doc Sharpen on a 100cc bike, so it all worked out really good. We were probably averaging around 50, 55 miles an hour through the canals. And when you're down with the walls going by you that fast, it really, it really seems quite fast. The only possible problem that could go wrong is if our motorcycle rider would have actually crashed close as we were trying to stay with the truck, the truck wouldn't have had time to do anything but running over. Another part of the stunt sequence called for one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's doubles, Peter Kent, to jump a Harley 13 feet into the canal. It really wouldn't have been possible to jump the motorcycle for real and land it in there without the, the foot pegs breaking off and flattening the wheels and pretty much airing out whoever was riding the motorcycle at that point. We ran a cable about 100 yards between two cranes that pulled it very taut, and, and so that became like a curtain rod. There were two cables front and rear that hooked to the motorcycle. So our rider just had to ride the motorcycle suspended. We would allow a little bit of cable and lower him down to the ground. We did it probably 25 or 30 times. So with Jim Cameron's help, we devised a way to cheat the whole situation and use computer graphics to make cables disappear. It turned out to be a great sequence. But for the crash of the tow truck, the risk was far too great to put a driver inside. Had the transmission and engine removed from the truck so it wouldn't be quite so front heavy and it wouldn't drive itself into the ground. So now that it has no power plant, we have to cable it in. A complex pulley system was attached to the tow truck and to two smaller trucks that would drive in the opposite direction. This action pulled the truck toward the canal. But on a dry run before the shoot, the crew ran into unexpected trouble. We lost the cable truck went slightly awry, but it got caught up on the ramp sideways. The permit to film in the area was about to run out. If the crew failed to rig a second attempt quickly enough, they'd lose the location. It took us a while to free it and get the thing restaged, and by now, we're running to get it done. Had any stunt performer been in the scene, Davis would have abandoned the shoot. No one likes to rush into that kind of thing if there's a possibility of someone getting hurt. And as the truck jumps and lands, Bobby splits. The crew realigned the cables to prevent the truck from missing the ramp. They were now ready to try again. The shot was completed just 10 minutes before the permit ran out. First time I ever saw it completed, I was very proud of it. I thought that you would have a hard time picking out any shot where it wasn't really Eddie riding the motorcycle.
Gary Davis always had a passion for stunts, even as a young boy. I was always wanting to try things. They put me on calves as a young kid, although I never became a very good cowboy. I found motors and wheels worked better for me. Davis graduated with a degree in engineering and physics, but was drawn to the motorcycle racetrack instead of the slide rule. My physics background has allowed me to set things up and eliminate a lot of the unknown factors. So now I can set a ramp and arrive at what angle and length that ramp should be to achieve what distance at what speed rather than just shooting from the hip. Davis's first coordinating job was Viva Knievel, where he worked with the man he considers his mentor, Kerry Lofton. He taught me early in the business that if you weren't willing to do a stunt twice, don't bother to do it at all. He was right. If a stunt is, is so edgy that all you can do is get up enough guts to try it once, then it's not set up right. And so because of that, I learned to set things the way I wanted them and, and for the most part avoided injury in the business. A stunt in which Davis didn't avoid injury was in Smokey and the Bandit 2. They wanted me to jump a car. Hal Needham, the director, had asked for it to be the, the longest jump that a car had made, so I hit the ramp at 88 miles an hour. Davis soared 163 feet in the air, 13 more feet than he had planned, and he came down hard. The seat malfunctioned and I broke my back, but it was a big one. It took Davis four months to recover from his injuries. One of Gary Davis's favorite stunts is this helicopter sequence. He designed and performed the stunt for the television series Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Take him loose. This sequence calls for a villainous helicopter pilot to try and shake the show's hero, Bruce Boxleitner, off the skid. So he started spinning the helicopter around in the air. So there were a number of times when I was just holding on. Come on, come on, take it. But through any of the radical stuff where he's spinning me around or he's dragging me through the trees or the water, I had a harness and a cable running up my arm. It's a sequence that when it came together, I was real proud of. I think it's one of the better aerial sequences. I want to make sure that not only is it scary or exciting to me, the performer, but that you, the viewer, appreciate it in the same way. Whether designing high-speed chases or hanging from a helicopter, Gary Davis delivers new levels of excitement to movie audiences the world over. Coming up next, two generations of Hollywood stunt drivers race against all odds. Gary Davis, the man Lofton mentored more than 20 years before, was hired to coordinate a car race sequence for the film. The sequence required a Porsche driven by Jeff Bridges and a Ferrari driven by James Woods to race at high speeds through traffic on Sunset Boulevard. Director Taylor Hackford gave Davis his marching orders. Taylor came to me and he said, okay, now your parameters are, we're gonna use a Porsche, and there's a Ferrari, and you can't dent either one of them. You can't cause any other cars to crash or spin out, but you have to make it as exciting as you possibly can. I drove the Porsche in the race, and there was no question who I was going to hire to drive the other car against me, and that was Kerry Lofton. And at that time, Kerry was about 67, 68 years old. There you go. He said, would you drive the Ferrari for me, and I said, sure. With Lofton on board, Davis choreographed the stunt shot by shot using a series of drawings called storyboards. He adjusted the cars to match his and Lofton's individual driving styles. When we first talked about the race and the characters, um, we were going to make uh, Jimmy Woods a little bit looser in his driving. But Kerry is so darn good, and inherently it's hard for him to look bad. 
that we approached it a little differently. The approach was to have the James Woods character drive radically, but with great control, throwing Jeff Bridges' character off balance. I'm pulling out of here! Carrie and I got up to 80 and 85 miles an hour through some of the sequences. We were always above 70, and that's why I wanted Carrie there, because I would be comfortable being fender to fender with him at those speeds. Fun's over, Jake! Not yet! Together, Lofton and Davis achieved the improbable, a car race with no spins and no crashes, but plenty of thrills. When they said he could stop on a dime, he would do it. You know, he would mark a spot in the road and he'd hit it. Kerry did it all by feel, and uh, it's actually a lost art. Kerry, it was perfect. 